Monsieur Dupre is very concerned about Josette, and so am I. Well, naturally, she is worried about Jeremiah. No, it's more than worry. He feels that you can ease her mind. He said you'd talk to her, will you? Yes, but not now. Why not? Well, I would rather not face her at the present time. Well, she needs consolation now. I... I'd rather I... not face her now. Barnabas. Mother, please sit down. I want to talk to you. What about? There's something I want to say. Yes? I've decided to get married. Get married? But who? Who will be your bride? Surely you and cousin Millicent? No. I have asked Angelique to be my wife. Angelique? Do you object to her because she's a servant? No. She's a very lovely young girl. And she will be devoted to me and she will be a credit to this house. Do you love her? Would I ask her to marry me if I, if I weren't? Oh, I suppose you wouldn't. Can I count on you for support? Yes, if this is what you really want. It is. When did you ask her to marry you? This evening. When did you fall in love with her? Oh, does it matter? The point is that I want Angelique to be my wife. A week ago you wanted Josette to be your wife. Josette is married to Jeremiah. That isn't why you're marrying, is it? No. Jeremiah and Josette have nothing to do with it. Barnabas, I'm not going to tell you what to do. But are you sure this is what you really want? Yes. Things have been happening so fast. Our world seems turned upside down. I hope, for your sake, you're not making a mistake. A mistake you'll regret the rest of your life. I wanted to bring happiness to this house. It brought nothing but unhappiness and bloodshed. No wonder Barnabas hates me. I hate myself. You mustn't. You mustn't talk that way. Why not? It's true. I wish I were dead. Don't say that. Angelique, please leave me alone. Are you sure there isn't something I can do for you? Please leave me alone. All right. I thought he stopped breathing. But Josette may be right. He may not live through the night. Has he been conscious? No. Perhaps it's just as well. Well, uh, do you uh, speak to Josette? Yeah, no. Why not? You said you were going to. Yes, and I will. Tomorrow, perhaps. Well, why couldn't you speak to her tonight? Well, because something has happened. Something that I, that I must tell Josette. And I couldn't do it tonight. If I spoke, it might come out. What are you talking about? Well, I'd rather not say. You'll know about it soon enough, and so will Josette. You don't hate her, do you? No. Do you mean that? Yes. Perhaps I should hate her, but I don't. I can't. Do you forgive her? Yes, I suppose she couldn't help falling in love with Jeremiah. And Jeremiah, do you forgive him? I want to. Do you? He is Josette's husband. I cannot forget that. As hard as I try, I cannot forget it. You were the closest of friends. He's dying, Barnabas. 
Well, for your own peace of mind. Try to forgive him. I am trying. For moments I succeed. And then I realize that he stole Josette from me. And that all the bitterness and hatred comes back. I wish it were not so, but... Wait, wait. Is he, is, is he breathing? I can't tell. Who is it? Who's there? Josette, what are you doing here? I just saw Jeremiah. What? I just saw him. He was in my room. But that's impossible. But he was there. I just saw him a moment ago. He behaved so strangely. No, Josette, my dear, you he couldn't have seen come into your room. No, you, you must have dreamed it. But he was there. It wasn't a dream. <sighs> Josette, my dear, Jeremiah is dead. died only a moment ago. But he couldn't have. He was in my room. I woke up. The clock struck two. I looked over to the window and he was standing there. When the clock struck two? Yes. But the clock was chiming the hour when Jeremiah died. Two o'clock was the exact moment of his death. Want the entire village to know that our son killed his uncle in a duel? Everyone knows now. Everyone does not. Some may suspect. The others will accept any story we tell them. And the story is going to be handed out that Jeremiah met with an unfortunate accident while cleaning his gun. Remember that. You'd rather say face than mourn your brother. I'll remember that too. Naomi. Will your story help Barnabas forget he killed his best friend? Will it help Josette? Will it help anyone in this house? We are leaving this house tomorrow. The new house isn't finished. The workmen say it will be quite livable. We can't move tomorrow. All that work. Have it done. But it's not necessary to rush so. As far as I'm concerned, it is. Why? Because I cannot stand in this house one more day. Joshua. Simply because I control my feelings doesn't mean that I don't have them. Too much has happened here. Too many tragedies. Perhaps Natalie and my sister were right. Perhaps there are evil forces at work in this house. And we will leave them when we move? I don't know. I just know that nothing else must happen. Something else is going to happen, Joshua. And I don't think it can be attributed to witchcraft or evil forces. I don't really know what it can be attributed well, to. Well, are you going to tell me or are you not? Well, you, you get so upset, I, I don't know how to tell you. In a moment, I will be upset with you. Out with it, woman. It's Barnabas. He came and told me that 
Well, that he's he's going to marry. Marry? Have he and Josette no propriety at all? She buries her husband one day and then the next. It is not Josette. Despite propriety, I wish it were. Who is he going to marry? Naomi. Angelique. Angelique? Do you mean that? Bring Barnabas down here immediately. I'm sorry, Father, that I didn't tell you myself. I certainly didn't intend Mother to tell you. Your father understands that, Barnabas. It is the only thing in this entire preposterous situation that I do understand. You can't be serious. I am. But you can't marry this, this girl. I'm going to, Father. It's absurd. I'm sure that you think so. How well do you know her? Very well. But well, that's nonsense. She's only been here a month. Why, I, I, I haven't even spoken ten words to her. Obviously, Barnabas has. I can barely remember what she looks like. She's extremely pretty. Is that why you're marrying her? No. You've had a nasty shock. Josette marrying Jeremiah, as she did. But there's no need to rush into this. There's no need at all. You simply go to that servant girl. Joshua! That is a fact. I'm not making a disparaging remark. You simply go to her and tell her that you've made a mistake. No, Father. What do you mean, no, Father? I'm sure you want to be out of this as much as I want you to. I have to. no choice. I promised I would marry her. Well, then break your promise. You raised me to be a man of honor. A man of honor doesn't get involved in anything like this. A man of honor marries someone suitable. I've tried to do that. You, you're hurt. You're bitter. Neither of which will stop me from keeping my promise. This girl is an adventurous. You know that. She must be sent out of this house. I will not let you make this mistake. I will speak with Andre immediately. Father, it is not a mistake. It is a mistake. You do not love her. She loves me. Well, that may impress you, but it doesn't me. I care for her. She will make a good wife. You don't know that. Father, I am going to live my own life. And if it is a mistake, at least it's mine. I will do whatever I think best for you. Then you will let me alone. I have let you alone and look at the result. Have you thought that I might be happy with Angelique? Oh. Has that possibility occurred to you? No. So leave us alone, Father. There's nothing you can do to stop us now. We'll see about that. Are you offended? Sir. That, that, that I am here. Cared very much for Jeremiah once. Before I came to this land. You must not blame yourself. I'm afraid I have no one else to blame. I killed him. Yes. But if I had come to you that night, before he and I ran away, if I had said to you, I love him. You would have let me go. I wouldn't have believed you. Let me tell you now that you did not cause his death. My temper did. I grieve as much about him as you do, perhaps even more. Do not hate yourself. Hate me. Oh, you must. You are so very young and many pleasant things will happen to you. No. Not after this. Yes, after this. You must believe me. Oh, Barnabas. What do 
are we going to do? We're going to start living again. A new life for both of us. Each of us. She has forgotten you, Jeremiah. Will you let her forget you so quickly? Will you let her murderer, your murderer, have her? Hear me, Jeremiah. Don't shut out my voice. Hear me and answer. What's wrong? I must go out. No? Yes. Yeah. Yes. You're not alone. I will not be alone for long. But you can't meet somebody tonight. I must go to him. Please don't stop I me. I must. He, he's not dead. Josette. He lives. A voice woke me and told me. No. Josette, don't go. Come back. Come to his grave, Josette. Jeremiah is in his coffin, waiting for you to waken him. Waiting for your voice, saying his name, to bring him back. Jeremiah! Jeremiah! That is all you need to say. He needs to hear your voice. He needs a sign of your love. He thinks your heart belongs to another. Waken him, Josette. Waken him. That voice. I only heard the wind. Come, Josette. No. Please, please. No. I must say his name and, and waken him. No, you must come home with me. Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Josette, you know he's dead. Please come with me. You must think about it. <gasps> I will not hear of your family returning to Martinique now. Uh, but, 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 sir... To leave with such a bitter taste. Well, perhaps it is wise to leave so we don't have such a bitter taste in the future. I assure you, sir... Oh, I did not mean it personally. Both Natalie and I are concerned over uh, my daughter. Now, her grief that she feels for her husband's death is quite appropriate. Yes, yes, well, no doubt, but... Uh, we are deeply concerned about her health. Seriously concerned. Jeremiah left a surprisingly large estate, I'm beginning to discover. It, of course, belongs to Josette. It would not be to her advantage for you to leave until... Matters Father! Father! Josette! What are you doing up? Why? Why, you should have been in bed hours ago. What is this, Naomi? She... What is the meaning of this? We had a dreadful shock. Well, tell us, tell us. Dead. Jeremiah is dead. You were with him when he died. I was, yes. Of course, Jeremiah is dead. What is this? She thought she heard a voice. I did. It broke me, so it must be true. The voice told me to go to the grave. That Jeremiah is alive. I was sitting there. Oh. Were you indeed, my dear? I had a glass of sherry for my nerves. I saw Josette going out. I tried to stop her. I couldn't. So I followed her to the cemetery. Oh, Josette. Josette. Dear. He, he was, she was standing at the grave. The wind was howling. And I heard a voice. It was telling me to call his name. I did. 
the earth on the grave, it seemed to move. And a hand reached through the earth. It was his hand. Was reaching and grabbing the air. It was Jeremiah's hand. Oh, Moppetee. You just imagine that you saw that hand coming through the earth. I didn't. I didn't. Mrs. Collins, tell him. Be careful, Naomi. State only what you actually saw. Joshua. I'm not in the habit of lying or seeing things. I saw the hand, too. Well, it was just an illusion, a, a trick of the moonlight. Father, help me. I am trying. Help me by believing me. Well, how can I believe you and the, the facts at the same time? Now, Jeremiah's death warrant was signed by a very reputable doctor. I'm the sure... Finest. That Jeremiah could not be alive now. Of course not. Then what did I see? Oh, I don't know. Josette... You've had so many, many shocks. So many shocks into many. Let, you need rest. Now let me take you upstairs. But perhaps you'll uh, remember things differently in the morning. You won't leave me alone. Of course not. When we saw that arm, we turned and ran. We were afraid of what we would see. I didn't look back, Father. He's going to come to find me. No. What are no. we going to do? You're going to get some rest. I'm going to take you upstairs. And I'll protect you just like when you were a little child. Nothing happened to you then, and nothing's going to happen to you now. I pray that what I saw, I imagined. But how could we both have? My wife has a rather vivid imagination, but perhaps after a night's rest, it will ease both your memories. Let me help you. No, no, no. Thank you. We'll manage. He is quite right. You were of no service to anyone in your condition. Joshua. I've been through a lot tonight. Around a quarter of a bottle, I should say. Whatever I had to drink was so long ago that it's unimportant. Only to you. What happened here? It was obviously the result of your condition and that poor child's nerves. You will see. Will I? What do you suggest? Shall I open my own bottle of sherry and see what I have to drink before I begin to see hands appearing? Witchcraft can't make men return from their graves. You are quite right. This is more effective. Do you prefer to keep on insulting me instead of thinking what has happened? Than to face what has happened and, well, that's what you're doing. Once more, Joshua, something has happened that there is no accounting for. Only this time I saw it. Or imagined it. Go to the grave and see. I did not say this in front of Andre, but there are certain prisoners who rob graves, perhaps in this case. Why won't you do No. I can answer that. You blame me, I blame you. It turns out this way. Jeremiah! Oh, Joshua, quickly! Joshua, please! What did you expect me to see, Naomi? There is nothing there, nothing at all. I did not imagine that hand or the figure in the window. I believe you. Do you? I felt you would. As soon as, as Joshua left the room, I sent for Ben. He's patrolling the grounds. I told him to wake another servant to watch the outside of the house. I've had the windows checked. The doors are locked. So you believe me now, there is an evil force in this house? Oh, when you first told me, I thought you... Mad. No. No, eccentric. Certainly eccentric. I wouldn't be eccentric. I wouldn't think we could do something about it. Who's ever doing these dreadful things? I'm sure it's not Miss Winters. But she is missing. It must be someone else. But who? I can only think logically up to a point. And then, as my husband tells me, I get too emotional to think. I've seriously considered the possibility of the, the witch or warlock, in this case, being your husband. Joshua? Frightful bad manners, I know, accusing one's host. Oh, you're not serious. I am serious in that everyone is suspect. Now, truthfully, 
Haven't you ever wondered about me? No. Actually, yes. And what did you decide? I never managed to decide anything about you. Oh, I would be such an easy solution. There aren't very many people to accuse. Andre, never. He never is very good at taking orders. The devil wouldn't put up with him. What about Angelique? It would make her more interesting. But I think no. I've known her ever since she was an uninteresting child. What about your servants, madame? No, no, they've been with us for years. That, that convict with the firewood, he has the face for it. <laughs> but I suppose the devil is too old to care for niceties like that, so... That leaves your sister-in-law. Abigail? Impossible. And then the victims themselves, your son Barnabas, and my niece, who has earned no pain but been paid quite a lot. I must go and relieve her father. He was falling asleep by her bed when I left him. Clearly, we must find Miss Winters. Whether we like it or not, there is a reason that she has disappeared. That reason may be Reverend Trask, but it may not be. Even I must realize that. Let me know if there's anything I can do for Josette. I will certainly call you. In the meantime, good night, madame. Andre. Shh. Now go, go to bed. I'll just be a moment. Go on, do as I say. Long. No, I'm just going to change. Uh, she'll be all right. She will be all right. We'll see to that. 